Let me know when you're recording. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, I'm Richard Patmore, and this is our skateboard collection. Pretty much these are most of the boards I had when I was younger, minus a couple. But this is my first deck after the banana board that I had. It's, I don't even know, this might be from Toys R Us or something like that. And then this is my second pro deck. I don't even know if this is a pro deck, to be honest. I got this at a skateboard shop in Kitchener called D&D &D Skateboards, I think it was. So this was after my cab. And I don't even know what these parts are. I think there's a rib bones uh, from Pau Peralta. The trucks, I think they're called Action, I don't even know. But this is an Illusion skateboard. And I've tried to look it up online, I can't find anything about it. So I remember when I got this board, I didn't want to ruin the graphic. So I uh, got rails, but then I also asked my dad if he could uh, do something about it. And he clear coated it. And that's why it's yellowed over time, because the clear coat went yellow. So originally this was a whiteboard. <laughs> And then I got this one, which was a Shine, which I read about was uh, Kevin Stab and Joe Johnson. Uh, they created a brand together and it was called Shine Skateboards. And I think this was the Joe Johnson version. And again, I think these are uh, rib bone rails. And my original Go Wing trucks I had when I was uh, maybe 12. I wish I saw the other one, but as you can see, it's kind of rotted away. And then went from the bigger boards to like more of the popsicle stick board and the wheels became very small and so did the trucks. So these are actually gull wing trucks, but they're, they're so tiny. I don't even know what the, what the width of this board is. Anyway, so that was one of my first popsicle boards. And then I got this popsicle board after that and it had like an Everslick or something I think it was called. And the trucks are just like some Walmart ones because I bought a Walmart you know, skateboard to sand and paint my own graphic on it. And so I just stuck the trucks on this. And so these are my old boards. Now hanging in the garage. This is my original pro deck I had when I was 12 years old. So this is my original Steve Caballero. It looks like it was hardly even worn, you know, but I had, you know, the tail guard on it. I had the rib bone rails. I used to have the gull wings on there and I think I had wrap bone wheels, if I remember correctly. Um, this one actually has the bonite in it, which is the little black layers. I don't know if you can see it. It's funny, I was watching a video on YouTube and I, not something I never noticed before, but you know, you always saw the bats. But if you look at the negative space between the bats, it's uh, actually bones, which is really cool. I didn't know that. So I collect a huge amount of Santa Cruz boards and Powell, but mainly I have a lot of Santa Cruz boards because um, I love Jim Phillips art. Uh, so this is the Salba, which is unbelievable. The detailing is amazing and the color is beautiful and the stain is amazing. So this is another one by uh, Jim Phillips, Santa Cruz board, uh, Jeff Grosso, board I think it's from the 80, late 80s I think the Natus it's got like a, a metal or a metallic sparkle going in the wings and things like that unbelievable and that matte gray it's gorgeous and then this is the Roscott that first got me into the collecting again <laughs> outside of the boards I originally had when I was younger but this is the first one I got and this was from Hammer uh, skateboards it's in the beaches I actually got most of the boards from Hammer and then more art by um, Vernon Johnson from Pau Peralta and things like that. The guy that did the Annie Anderson graphic. And this Vilele, I love this board. Um, I still remember it from like, it was called Public Domain. This Pure Wander is a board a buddy of mine had around the same time I had the Caballero. Um, so when I saw a reissue of it, I had to have it. Cause I remember loving that board uh, when he had it. And I know this says something, I can't remember what it was, but we saw a video on YouTube that was talking about it. All these boards are boards that I grew up loving and you know couldn't afford it back in the day obviously and so we I've been kind of collecting the boards that I fell in love with when I was a kid and I love reissues because they're pristine they're clean I know a lot of people like the original boards from 80s all that kind of 90s all that kind of thing um, but they're hard to find and very expensive to buy so you know if I spend a hundred bucks on a board and it's mint and I'm buying it because I love the graphic and the shape of it and the beauty of it, you know, and it's pristine. Like there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, this Corey O'Brien deck is unbelievable. And I don't know if you can get in close, but you know, from photos when I was younger, you know, seeing it in a thrashing mag or something like that, you didn't see that kind of detail. But now that I have it, you know, there's all these little hidden creatures and stuff like that that's in the front end of this. So I absolutely love this board. 
I think this was my second reissue board that I got. I think I got the Ross Scott first and the Corey O'Brien. Jason Jesse Neptune, I think it was called. Um, and I have two of them because uh, there's two iterations of it that I know of, at least, um, where it has like subtle differences in the graphics. Whether the sky's tattooed, it's got no eyes, eyes, the snake's different, the skulls are different, the castle's a bit different, the top of the board's different. So it's, just, it's really cool to see the two variations of the graphic that they've printed. Jason Jesse Sun God. Um, I love this graphic so much. And again, it's got like this purple metallic in it. And I don't know if you can see it, but it says Jason Jesse Mini. And the Mini thing I just actually found. I didn't realize that at first, but then it explains the size difference between the two. And then of course the Salba. And this was, I, th I think, uh, Jim Phillips and John Lucero collaboration of graphic. I think Lucero did the type, which I'll show you on the Lucero board because it's got a similar style to it. He may have done other pieces too, but as far as I know, that was a collaboration graphic. And again, it's got like the blue to pink metallic fade. Awesome, awesome graphic. This board, uh, John Lucero used to skate with Schmidt stick uh, back in the day. And I think it used to say Schmidt stick up here, if I'm learned correctly. But anyways, he started his own uh, label uh, called Black Black Label Skateboards. Um, and then he's reissued his old graphic from, I think, the 80s, uh, where it was a couple versions, one where the face is coming through or the one that's kind of hidden. I always liked this one a little bit more. I think it was the mystery of it and kind of a little more freaky. Anyways, but I don't think it's the same shape, but the graphic's still the same, as far as I know, minus the Schmidt stick. I think this is the only Elva board I have, which is uh, from the movie Thrashing. Yeah! Dagger! And it has the dagger graphic. I don't think there was the same graphic, it wasn't the same graphic in the movie, but I think this board was based on that movie, uh, The Daggers. Um, so they call this the Dagger Tail. And it's got this wicked kind of bat shape to it and stuff like that. But it means something to me because it's, you know, a movie I used to love when I was a kid. Um, so I had to have it. Um, so I got a couple Jeff Kendalls, which are reissues as well, from Santa Cruz Skateboards. And this has got like a Prismacolor uh, finish to it. I don't know if that's a veneer, if it's a wrap or what, but I just, I fell in love with it. I think it's so cool, the printing technique of that. And this, of course, is graphic I remember when I was younger. And same with this Gen Jeff Kendall, the graffiti one. Yeah. So I love this board and it's got like a matte finish to it too. And so it's cool seeing the two together two variations of the Jeff Kendall. I fell in love with these boards. They're moonshine uh, boards and freestyle decks. So I just fell in love with the, the graphics of these and the shapes and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but all the boards are hung with uh, shoelace, which is super cool. So I started buying all these different colors of shoelace to kind of match the, match the boards and fade into it. So these are new boards, not a reissue. Um, but I love the fact that a new company was doing freestyle decks which you don't see as much anymore. Ever since I was younger, I always wanted to have my own skate. So I hand painted this one, airbrushed the background, and then uh, hand painted all the black line work. Uh, funny story about this is, when I first clear coated it, I did a light sand to do a second clear coat. And the black was raised a bit because I did the black by hand with a paintbrush. And so it's, it sanded off a lot of the detail. So I had to repaint the black line work again, then re-clear it. It was just a pain in the ass. Uh, this one I was did with, um, I stained the board and then used the Sharpie and uh, drew all this and then went in and did the blue and the white and the red detailing. And the cool part about this board, other than like it's super detailed, um, is our daughter uh, did the Skull logo. Uh, we call it Mad Sin, like is like a skate company. So she she drew this, and then this became the Daddy Daughter uh, logo and or sorry first pin that we had done. So this is a collection of uh, fingerboards from Bottoms Up, and I found him on Instagram and found out he's in Toronto, and so I bought one of these boards originally, and then I hand painted it and I was gonna mess around with it, but I fell in love with it and I didn't want to ruin it, so. Now it sits on my, my desk. Just through getting to know him and talking to him, kind of did this uh, series of art, which started with these two. 
which are drawings I had done a few years back, and he said, you know, is it okay if I use these for my fingerboards? I was, I was like, of course, you know. It was a dream to do uh, skateboard art. So, anyway, so my first skateboard art was fingerboards, <laughs> which is really cool. And then this third one was uh, his, his son had an idea for a series called The Deep, and so I kind of did the sea creature, and they kind of made this custom shape, which is almost like a shark. Really cool. And it's like, it's a work of art. There are layers of veneer, just like a skateboard. Trucks are actually metal. It's got like little bearings in there, not just metal inside the plastic wheels, but unbelievable. These are kind of the riders, land yacht with the drop through trucks. Super fun board to ride and bomb down hills. Got this beautiful arbor, which is kind of, you know, similar shape to a regular skateboard, just bigger. Bigger wheels, bigger trucks, bigger board. The, the shitty part about this, this had a sticker on it. And instead of uh, using like Goo Gone, I ended up using <laughs> like, I think it was like a, a paint thinner. Anyways, it took the paint right off it. And it broke my heart. Anyways, it's a story to tell. So uh, this is my daily rider. Mike McGill uh, flight deck and I've had this for board for two years. I've switched up the wheels since and I uh, have the, the fucking awesome uh, independent trucks. Uh, this is my second pair of slime balls. I love slime balls. Bronson bearings. They're amazing. I can't say enough about this board. I love this board so much. It's amazing. All right so this is my wife's daily rider. <laughs> Love this graphic. She also has the Bronson uh, bearings as well. Uh, this is like the first board my wife bought to skate. There's a power Peralta Ripper. Super cool. She just got uh, new wheels for it, so I'm just gonna put those back on. This is the board our, our daughter rides now, which is a Lee Yanku. Uh, cool story about this is uh, one of the guys from CJ's uh, knows Lee Yanku, and uh, Lee Yanku skates at CJ's once in a while. And uh, anyway, so we organized him showing up at the space, obviously to skate, um, and sign up for our daughter, uh, which she can't really see anymore because she's worn it off from skating. But anyways, super nice guy, really cool, awesome story with that. This one's beautiful. Like, I, I, I truly love skateboards and the art of them. They're amazing. Anyways, this is my wife's, and it has like a material inlay on it. Just unbelievable. It actually came with a, a little tag and a swatch of the material that they put into the board. But that shape is gorgeous. Daughter has kind of like one of those drop through truck boards from Land Yacht. It's super comfy to ride and it's fun. It's fun. Just cruise around. So th these are kind of cool. Um, this is a buddy of ours uh, that we met through skateboarding uh, named Beto Jans. And uh, he does these really cool skull. Uh, skulls out of old skateboards and uh, anyways we're lucky to have one he came over he hand cut them in our yard um, and then he also brought a, another one and said uh, to our daughter you know uh, why don't you draw a skull and I'll cut it out so he ended up cutting it out and giving it to us, which is super nice. The story of this deck is this kind of was the deck that got me back into skateboarding like 20 years later almost. Um, Where's a board I got from my wife and daughter for Father's Day. So this means a lot to me because now it's a work of art that hangs on the wall. And it's an old uh, Jordan Hoffer uh, Pal Peralta board. This is our, our third Wunkowski board that we have. We saw this colorway and I, I just, again, fell in love with it. So now I get to look at this every day in the world working from home. Hey, I'm Asin and my dad's gonna show you my collection. When our daughter was four, uh, like I, I was starting to get back into skateboarding a little bit more and stuff like that. And so I wanted to get her a board. Yeah. And so 
I bought this for her as her first board, which is obviously a Dogtown Skate, which is, you know, was big when I was younger. And they're still going. And then it goes into her second skateboard, Screaming Hand, classic graphic by Jim Phillips. This, this is the one she really started riding and loving. And uh, she started taking like skateboard lessons and stuff with Impact Skate Club and uh, CJ's, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, she's ripping now, it's good. This is the first graphic that she started like falling in love with because we collect skateboards. Uh, she kind of got a passion for it, so <laughs> she started collecting boards as well. And this is the first one that she loved and Phil. And uh, this guy's a really good, great illustrator. Uh, he's got his own company called Nightwatch Studios, I think it's called. And I think his name is on Instagram is Tallboy something. Can't remember. Anyways, his art's amazing. He does a ton of stuff for Santa Cruz. Um, it used to be an old band deck. And so we sanded it down and uh, my daughter and I painted it and she drew the skull. And we kind of, that was our first uh, kind of promo for our own company called Daddy Daughter Designs where we did pins and prints and stuff like that. So then she fell in love with this welcome board, which I, I love too, I think it's really cool. Um, so we have a few welcome boards in our collection. My daughter actually won this board online, a company called Laura Skate Decks. So it's super cool, so we kept that. Uh, we brought our daughter to the skate shop and said, uh, you know, you can pick one for, you know, for birthday or something like that. And anyway, she, she picked this one. <laughs> and I think she was eight years old or maybe, no, younger, seven. And uh, the guy that we bought it from was kind of surprised that she loved this graphic so much because it's so demonic. And uh, anyway, it's amazing. Um, this is an artist called, uh, his name's Ken Taylor. And he does like a lot of band posters and stuff like that. And I love his art too. So this is the Rob Ross cop. It's like one of my all time favorite graphics. Um, but I just love this colorway so much in the graphic and it's like a matte finish too, it's beautiful. Um, couldn't say no, had to get it. We have a couple of Nora boards from Welcome. This is the second one we bought. Just love the graphics, love the shapes of the Welcome boards. They're beautiful. Um, th this board here, a series of decks by Santa Cruz put out by an artist called Michael Reeder. And I think his website's Reader One, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, I just love his art. This board here is uh, another Santa Cruz board. Uh, by It's an Asta board. And it's actually a pre-issue, so it's kind of stylized after the 80s kind of skateboard that they're reissuing now. We have actually three Eric Winkowskis. And put it beside the Tony Hawk because of the shapes. They're almost identical, which is crazy. Um, so I know he's he usually rides like the kind of old school vibe uh, shape boards. Um, we just fell in love with the graphic and so we bought it. And, uh, same with the Tony Hawk uh, board in the natural stain. So now we're in our bedroom. Uh, we actually have a skateboard in our room too. Uh, this is the first one uh, my wife and I bought together. Uh, for our room and it kind of plays off the color scheme that's in our room um, so this is another Nora board from welcome and uh, we fell in love with it so much I don't know if I can flip it over but this top graphic is unbelievable and so beautiful and so I ended up uh, taking a photo of it and then live tracing it in Illustrator and then we created kind of a one, one of a kind collage piece that's in our bedroom uh, that we printed and head framed and things like that. Kind of play off the color scheme of the room and the color scheme of the board. So we got an original <laughs> from the board. We're not selling it. <laughs> so these two boards kind of have a cool story. Um, my wife, for my birthday. Our anniversary. Our anniversary, sorry. Our anniversary. Um, found this guy online, which I was, I think I was following. His handle is uh, Motalica, and he kind of takes uh, reissued skateboards and then masks them out and then hand paints all these patterning, kind of like an old hot rod or like a low rider or stuff like that. Um, he also paints motorcycles, um, but this this is unbelievable. Like, I don't know if you can get the flake in this thing. This guy's a true artist, like the line, the line work he does, and it's almost like a lace pattern in here. And then the gloss is unbelievable, like it's, Perfect. There's no blemish on this thing. His boards are amazing. 
and I'm so happy to have this in our collection. So the cool story about these two boards is uh, we met Andy Anderson at uh, CJ's. Uh, they just put a bowl, indoor bowl in and he was showing up for the grand opening of it and putting on a little demo. Anyway, so we got to meet him and we bought his, we bought his deck and was hoping that he would sign it. And uh, he ended up <laughs> signing it like six times and then doodling a whole bunch of cool stuff throughout it, like adding eyes and eyes up here. But the best part about it was he kind of walked us through the graphic by uh, Vernon Johnson, who's the original illustrator for most of the pile boards back in the day. Um, so anyways, he, he did Andy Anderson's, and Andy Anderson uh, told me the story about it, which is unbelievable. So he talked to me about a half hour of everything about this graphic. <clears throat> and, uh, and there was actually a, a YouTube video about him talking with the illustrator, Vernon Johnson, on YouTube, which you could look up, which is really cool. Um, anyways, so he was saying that he got a helmet made by him for the Olympics. So he showed us photos of the, the helmet that Motalica painted him, and it was red and beautiful and all that kind of stuff. And so it was kind of cool that we both kind of shared a story about this guy, Mutalica or Motalica. Anyways, is that enough?